Hi guys, I'm here with another wrap up. The first book I read was Hexed by Michelle Kears. So this is about a girl in high school whose mother is really protective of this old Bible that her grandmother gave her. And uh, one day the Bible goes missing and her mother completely starts freaking out and, and through some circumstances she finds out that she is actually the next person in her family's line to become a full-fledged witch. And it develops from there her having to find this Bible because these, these two different breeds of magical beings, one's a witch, the other one's, I don't know what you would call them, they seem like witches too. But not quite and there's this curse that was placed all between the two of them so that if the other race which is kind of the more evil one I'd say kills the good side then they lose their powers and stuff but uh I was actually disappointed with this one while the romance in this one was okay it wasn't something I was just totally rooting for the entire book or even a good portion of the book but it was okay. The magic system didn't really make a lot of sense, to me at least, and it just didn't hold my attention as much as I thought it would or should. And I actually bought, this is actually one of the reasons why I never buy two or more books in a series because I never know if I'm going to like the first one and because I cho I'm choosing not to continue on with this series, I'm going to have to donate the second book without reading it. But luckily this was only a duology, so it's not like I wasted a lot of money or anything. And I bought these on book outlets, so that they were very cheap. But I gave this book a two-star rating, and as I said, I will not be continuing on with this. Next book I attempted to read was The Fairy Keeper by Amy Barris. And this one was recommended to me by somebody. I can't remember. Uh, so um, I think I bought this. Did I buy this on Book Outlet? I can't remember. I might have bought it on Amazon, but either way, I was very disappointed with this one because uh, while it was said, even on Goodreads, it says it's a YA, but it's definitely more middle grade. So I, did, I don't even think I made it to chapter 10 because the character was very immature and very young. I think she's supposed to be 16, which should have made this a YA novel, but it was very middle grade, so... I did not get past chapter 10 as I said and I will not be continuing on with this series. I don't even think I gave this a rating actually. Hold on. Let me see. Did I give this a rating? No. I didn't even mark it on my on my Goodreads. So yeah. I didn't give this one a rating uh, but if I'd have to give it one, uh, I'd say it'd probably be a one star. Probably one and a half, maybe, and that's being kind of generous. Next, I read Dead Witch Walking by Kim Harrison. Um, this is an author I've heard a lot about, and I've been wanting to read her for literally years. Like, when I first started getting into reading, I heard of her, and I could never actually find the first book in the series. I always found, like, the fifth book, seventh book, stuff like that. But I finally found the first book in my local used bookstore. This one is about a... A witch in this world, everybody knows about magical creatures. They're an everyday part of life. There was this thing called the the reveal or I can't remember what it was called, but basically all the magical peop all the magical creatures came out and said, Hi, we've always been here. And so and so um this follows a girl, a woman named Rachel, who is a witch, but she is also part of the Oh, I can't remember. What's the name of the company she works for? MBI or something like that. I think it is the MBI. So basically she works for like uh, the part of the government that, that deals with magical creatures. So she's basically kind of a cop, pretty much. She's part, she is a cop and she goes after people who have skipped bail or have done uh, black magic on humans or vampires who have killed people whatever she goes after those people but after her boss treating her like crap for like the last year she just cannot take it anymore and then she arrests this leprechaun for tax evasion and the leprechaun offers her three wishes if she lets her go so Rachel decides you know what 
I'm done working for my company anyway. I'm going to take those wishes and I'll let you go. So she, she strikes out on her own and becomes a magical bounty hunter. And her boss, because she broke her contract, sends assassins out to kill her. So she is trying to avoid assassins from fairies and vampires and other witches. And at the same time, trying to start her own business as a, as a magical bounty hunter. But I actually did enjoy this book and I do plan to continue on with the series and I gave this one three stars. Next I continued an, an entire trilogy and the first one I actually read last month so I pretty much just kind of skimmed my favorite parts of it and then continued on with the book and that is Witches of East End, The Serpent's Kiss, and The Winds of Salem. So I completed this trilogy, didn't really kind of I kind of sort of read this one. Like I said, I pretty much just kind of skimmed my favorite parts that I bookmarked. And then these two I rented from the library because I wasn't completely sure if it would, if I would love the books after it. So I figured if I love these, then I would buy them. But I'm not going to buy them. They were good, but I don't think I'd reread the whole series again. This one is about three witches, which if you saw my last wrap up, then you know how I talked about how in the TV series there were four witches. Their Aunt Wendy never came into the first book, so I'd hope she'd come into one of the other two. But she did not, so I'm guessing that she truly was just an add-on character, which I am sad about because she was one of my favorites besides Freya. Uh, so, Witches of East End, I gave a four-star rating. Uh, this one continues right after uh, the Witches of East End, like... A few months I think not even six months maybe three or so months after it and it was not as great but it was still interesting to see the different characters and how the North mythology continues on to this book how you see different characters and what their roles were and how they knew each other and yada yada uh, but I gave this one a three star rating and then the conclusion to the series again still interested to see how the North mythology played in and you got to and one of the characters gets sent back in time and she pretty much lives through not the actual Salem witch trials but like a little before the witch trials actually start where witches are being hunted but the but it's not as crazy as it was and you see how um how something so little as someone refusing to tell someone something could spin out of control and how the the girls who started the actual witch trials in this book I wanted to kill all three of them uh especially the one who was supposed to be the character who got sent in time's friend uh something happened and there was like this confusion one of the uh, friend thought that the character liked the the guy that she liked and because of that she started the whole witch trial thing and it was just like really are you serious? You want to get this person killed just because you think she likes the person that you're in love with? Come on. But um, I believe I gave this one a three star rating. Next I read the latest book in the Throne of Glass series and that is Tower of Dawn by Sarah J Maas. Uh, I got the Barnes & Noble's exclusive edition. I was hoping for you know like art in the end pages or something or maybe something on the actual cover but actually what the exclusive is is like little notes that I guess Sarah jogged down while she was thinking about writing the book and different editing editions that she did like if she wrote something she, she might have wrote something down like um like instead of putting he she wanted to put kale so she scratches out he she draws kale and a line towards his name so just different editing notes i guess you could say which is nice but i was definitely hoping for something else uh this one i wasn't as thrilled about as i normally am because i miss my babies the entire book no one in this book well hold on a second yeah, no one in this book was someone I was a huge fan of, someone that, someone that I was just waiting to see what they would do next. But it was nice to see Kale become less of an a-hole than he normally is, and to actually grow somewhat of a personality, and it was nice to see his love interest and how, what happened between him and Nesrin. So this one was definitely more political than adventurous, like the other ones, like the other one there was political stuff in it, but this one was just like 90% political with the, about a 10% adventure. But uh, it was nice to see um, uh, Kale tell, tell all the stories about Selena and Rowan and everyone else and him sort of kind of trying to defend them and him getting over his issues with not only Selena falling in love with somebody else 
but what the things he did, how he was at fault. So he finally stopped blaming everybody else for his problems. So it was nice to see uh, the dynamic between him and Irene and it was killing me the entire book that he didn't see that piece of paper until literally the last page and then he just kind of smiled. So um, you should definitely read The Assassin's Blade before this because there are some uh, novellas that deal with some of the characters in these books that you're going to want to read before you read this otherwise you're, you might be a little confused. You might be a little confused on the uh, easter eggs in this un until about the end. For the most part I can't believe I'm gonna say this but I pretty much gave this a three star rating until maybe like about the last 10 chapters then it really started picking up to what I expect a Sarah J Mass book to be. But I did give this a four star rating at the end. And last but not least is Hunting Prince Dracula by Carrie Maniscalco. Um, this is the sequel to Stalking Jack the Ripper and I gave this one a four star rating. After what happens in Stalking Jack the Ripper, all the trauma and stuff that Aubrey Rose goes through, her father finally agrees at the end of Stalking uh, Jack the Ripper to let her go try out for this forensic school in Romania with Thomas. So they go there and they find out not only have they not actually been accepted, they actually have to go through like a trial test period to see if they can even go to start going to the school. So uh, I was kind of on the fence on would she get into the school and would she not because I mean with her headmaster he was like completely prejudiced against women so I, because of that I didn't expect him to let her into the school but at the same time I'm like where's the story gonna go if she doesn't get into the school but I was satisfied with the ending and how it all happened and I actually did guess the killer um if you I'm not sure if it's up by now but I actually did vlog my experience for this one so I'm hoping it'll be up before this video but you never know with me so um so I was satisfied with this book and I liked the adventure and everything and I like I said I guess the killer I, I had pretty much by toward by the middle of the book I think I had like five or six people who I was thinking about and then by the time just before they announced the killer I had three people of mine so my killer actually was one of those three people and I gave this one a four star rating the same rating as I gave the first book I really did enjoy it and all its pictures although I think there were less pictures in this one than there were in the first one here's an example of one of the pictures hope my lights not too bright for you to see that so there are pictures like that throughout both the books although I think the first one had more pictures than this one did but there was one part where I was literally I wouldn't say terrified but I was just cringing the entire time and that is the part with the spiders the room of spiders I was just like Ugh. and it doesn't help that the two characters the two main characters in this book also have a fear of spiders so I had my fear along with their fear and it was just not nice so yeah so that is my wrap up and I will see you guys next time